In November 2022, Edwin Castro became the sole winner of the record-breaking $2.04 billion prize, which he won from a $2 Powerball ticket sold at Joe's Service Center in Altadena, California. These numbers are staggering and can make the lottery seem like an attractive option. But is it really a good bet? To answer this question, we need to understand the odds. The odds of winning the Powerball, for example, are 1 in 292,201,338. To put that in perspective, you're about 20 times more likely to be struck by lightning in your lifetime than to win the Powerball. Imagine you're standing in front of a gigantic wall filled with tiny slots. Each slot represents a second in the past nine years. That's a whopping 284,083,200 slots. Now, if you were to throw a dart at this wall with your eyes closed, the chance of hitting the exact slot or second you're thinking of is incredibly slim. Yet, believe it or not, this chance is still significantly higher than winning the Powerball lottery. Now, let's shift our gaze to the glittering world of lotteries. The Powerball, with its jaw-dropping jackpot of $2.04 billion, certainly seems tempting. But let's crunch some numbers. The chance of winning the Powerball jackpot is so low that guessing the precise second from a nine-year time frame is indeed 1,000 times more likely. But wait, there's more. You might think, well, the potential payout is so massive it could offset the rarity of winning, right? Unfortunately, even when the jackpot skyrockets, the lottery isn't a good mathematical bet. This video is about the mathematics behind the Powerball and Mega Millions and addresses whether the lottery is a good bet. So, what exactly is a lottery? At its core, a lottery is a game of chance where winners are selected through random drawings. You pay a small sum of money for a chance to win a huge jackpot. In the U.S., adults spend around $370 per person annually on lottery tickets. That's a lot of cash. And this figure is just an average. Many people spend much more. The fascinating part is that a significant portion of lottery revenue comes from a small group of heavy players. For example, in Minnesota, 20% of lottery players account for 71% of lottery receipts. Similarly, in Pennsylvania, 29% of players account for 79% of lottery revenue. This concentration indicates that while many people play the lottery occasionally, a minority of frequent players drive the majority of sales. Mathematicians sometimes separate good bets from bad ones using a concept called expected value. Even a good bet might turn out to be a bad idea, mathematically. For better understanding, let's take this example. Imagine you're at a carnival, and there's a game where you can bet $1 on the roll of a die. If you guess the number correctly, you win $1. If not, you lose your dollar. Sounds simple, right? But let's put on our mathematician's hat and analyze this game using the concept of expected value. The expected value is a way of determining whether a bet is fair or not. It's calculated by multiplying each possible outcome by the probability of that outcome and then summing these values. In the world of betting, the expected value is the product of the probability of winning and the winning amount minus the product of the probability of losing and the losing amount. In our game, there are two possible outcomes. You win $1 or you lose $1. Uh, the probability of winning, if you guess the number correctly, is one-sixth, and the probability of losing is five-sixths. So the expected value of the game is one-sixth one dollar minus five-sixths times one dollar equals minus sixty-seven cents. This means that for every dollar you bet, you're expected to lose about sixty-seven cents in the long run. So despite the equal win and loss amounts, the game is not fair because you're more likely to lose. But what if it only cost $1 to play, but you would win $100 if you guessed correctly? Again, let's put on our mathematician's hat and analyze this game using the same concept of expected value. This time, there are two possible outcomes. You win $100 or you lose $1. The probability of guessing the number correctly is 1 sixth, and the probability of losing is 5 sixths. 
So, the expected value of the game is 1 sixth times $100 minus 5 sixths times $1 equals $15.83. This time, for every dollar you bet, you're expected to win about $15.83 in the long run. Now let's consider the equilibrium payout, which is the payout that makes the expected value of the game zero. For a die roll, this payout is $5 because you're five times more likely to lose than win. So a reward five times larger than the cost balances out the risk. Expected value equals one sixth times $5 minus five sixths times $1 equals zero dollars. Now, what happens when we apply the concept of expected value to analyze the Powerball jackpot? The lottery jackpot starts at approximately $20 million, and a ticket costs only $2. However, the probability of hitting the jackpot is extremely low at 1 in 292,201,338 people. Now, if we apply the concept of expected value, we get an interesting result. The expected value is $20 million divided by 292,201,338 minus $2 multiplied by 292,201,337 divided by 292,201,338. Crunching these numbers, we find that the expected value of a Powerball ticket is about $1.93. This means that for every $2 spent on a lottery ticket, the expected return is about negative $1.93, which is less than the cost of the ticket itself. In other words, statistically speaking, you're losing money with each ticket you buy. Now, let's consider the scenario where the jackpot rolls over into the next drawing growing over many consecutive weeks. You might think that the huge prize makes it worth trying your luck, despite the very small chance of winning. However, this is not the case. The reason is that when the jackpot grows to a multi-billion dollar payout, it attracts a lot of attention, and a lot more people buy tickets. This increases the likelihood of multiple winners, which means the jackpot would be split among them so the actual amount you could win is less than the advertised jackpot. To account for this, we need to adjust our expected value calculation to include the probability of splitting the jackpot. However, calculating these probabilities can be quite complex as it depends on the number of tickets sold, which can vary greatly from drawing to drawing. So, paradoxically, massive jackpots can often be worse bets. Despite the allure of becoming a multimillionaire overnight, it's important to remember that, mathematically speaking, buying a lottery ticket is usually not a good bet. But, as they say, you can't win if you don't play. When a lottery jackpot reaches astronomical amounts like $1,560,000,000 in 2016, it creates a buying frenzy. Over 635 million tickets were sold, which is over 20 times the number sold in an average Powerball drawing that year. With so many tickets in circulation, the probability of more than one winner exceeded 60%. Indeed, three winners ended up splitting the grand prize. This is a crucial detail often overlooked in expected value calculations. When factoring in the total number of players, tax withholdings, and secondary prizes for partial matches, even such a gargantuan jackpot didn't offer a positive expected value. Smaller jackpots draw smaller crowds and carry a more negligible chance of splitting, but even then, with a negative $1.93 expected value, it's still a bad bet. Now let's talk about the numbers people choose. Even though all sequences of six lottery numbers are equally likely to win, many people handpick their numbers. They often choose sequences that, that mean something to them, like birthdays or anniversaries, which results in many numbers under 31. People also seem to prefer odd numbers and numbers that aren't multiples of 10, perhaps because they seem more random. This behavior increases the chance of pot splitting for draws with smaller, random looking numbers, but decreases it for other draws. So, while you can't increase your chance of your numbers being drawn, you can decrease your chance of splitting the jackpot by choosing large, even numbers and including multiples of 10.
It's a fascinating blend of mathematics, psychology, and luck. Indeed, the concept of expected value is a powerful tool in probability theory and statistics. It gives us a way to quantify the average outcome of a random event. In the case of the $100 die roll, the expected win of $15.83 is an average over many, many rolls. In any single game, you'll either lose $1 or win $100. Moreover, the expected value doesn't take into account the diminishing marginal utility of money. This is the economic principle that, as a person increases their wealth, each additional dollar is worth less to them. So, winning a second $50 million won't bring as much joy or utility as the first $50 million. Another important factor is risk aversion. Most people are risk averse, meaning they prefer a sure thing over a gamble with an equal expected value. This is why insurance exists. People are willing to pay a certain cost to avoid the risk of a large loss, even if the expected value of the insurance is negative. Finally, predicting which lotteries offer a good bet is a gamble in itself, as ticket sales numbers aren't published in advance. And even when a lottery has a positive expected value, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a good bet due to the extremely low probability of winning and the high variance of outcomes. For just $2, a lottery ticket offers players the chance to dream big. It's a small price to pay for the thrill of anticipation, the fun of imagining what you do with a windfall, and the excitement of checking the numbers. This can bring joy and entertainment, which are valuable in their own right. Moreover, the money spent on lottery tickets contributes to public services. In many places, a portion of lottery revenues is used to fund education, infrastructure, and other public programs. So, even if you don't win, your money is still contributing to the community. Research has indeed suggested that the anticipation of a potential win can bring happiness, regardless of the outcome. It's a reminder that, while math can provide us with probabilities and expected values, it doesn't capture the full range of human emotions and experiences. So, while I can't recommend playing the lottery based on the math alone, I agree that there's more to a happy life than just numbers. Remember, lottery is a form of entertainment, not an investment strategy. As they say, not everything that counts can be counted, and not everything that can be counted counts. While the lottery can be fun and exciting, it's important to play responsibly. After all, the best bet is one you can afford to lose. There is a famous saying by George Bernard Shaw, in gambling, the many must lose so that the few can win. 